Guts, guns, damn good fun. Welcome to Brafter's Briefs, everyone, and this is Death Road to Canada. A quirky roguelike title from Rocket Cat Games. I had not heard of these guys before, but I'll be looking out for more of their stuff in the future, because um, this game is brilliant. It's so much fun. Um, I've spent a good three to four hours on it non-stop so far, so I thought I'd have a little bit of a brief on it. The premise is fairly simple. Get to Canada without dying along the way, or dying too much. You get various survivors that come along and they, they crop up. So if you die, it's not quite permadeath, but if you lose your entire party, it's, it's permadeath. So it's roguelike. The game promises so much replayability. I mean, you've got different encounters and they're never going to be the same because your party will always change and fluctuate each time you play it. You'll often ruin your chances of getting to the said promised land if your party, uh, say, say one character's attitude is in the red, another character's attitude is in the green. They're going to argue and they're not going to stop arguing until one of them is dead or the other one ends up throwing them through the windshield and uh, they die. Great fun, huh? Up to 500 zombies can be on the screen at any one point to hunt you down. It's insane. Because there doesn't seem to be any real frame rate drop or anything like that. Um, it runs on quite minimal systems. So you can get away with, with quite a lot here just due to the art style and the graphics. It's very well polished. You can choose to flee or fight. You can be quite tactical about it. You don't have to, say, run into it all game. Oh, yeah, all guns blazing. Uh, it's just so much fun. You've also got a character creator, which is, again, pretty damn fun. Puts you in the action, your friends, your family, even your boss. Only to have them meet in the glorious fashion as they explode when they cease to be. Oh, it's just... Oh, I, I can't praise this enough. I mean, there's special and rare events, which I've only found a few of. I think I bumped into the witch which is a fairly new addition to the game because they're constantly updating it. I mean, it's not even in full release yet and they're updating it so much and giving so much uh, to their, their small community at the moment. We've got over-the-top weapons like flamethrowers, chainsaws, other strange characters with stranger abilities like dogs, that can wield shotguns, or a strong man who can lift his own car and just casually walk off the map with it if it's surrounded by zombies, just like pick it up, and, yeah, fair enough. Because there's semi-non-linear kind of dialogue based events as well, brings character choices into play, so say you've got one character who's really good at wits, uh, it might give you a dialogue uh, that, will, that will pop up and you'll be able to pass through it effectively or not effectively as the case may be 90 percent of the time it's not effectively and you tend to end up in a worse scenario there are bandits there are zombies um i don't think you ever fight the bandits so they might bring that in a later patch i'm not sure it'd be interesting but um, you don't have much in the way of hit points you usually you have about three hit points varying on the character uh, there's a particular perk where your character will be immensely strong but only have one hit point and that is hard really nails hard but the results in in the dialogue base I mean you could have say like a car splattering through 50 zombies at one point as it smoothly drifts around the corner your character leans out the window and just flips them the bird as they're going or your entire party can go careening through the windscreen and become an appetizer of strawberry jam on the pavement lovely and teach your cat to drive I've said really uh, <laughs> there's the local multiplayer means there's loads of fun with it as well. I mean, if, say, it's not very often that games these days are local multiplayer. It's stuck to the one screen, but I think that lends itself nicely just to the Arcadian retro feel to it. So it's not too bad. It does mean there's no online play, whether or not that will be something they put in later. But you'll probably still be on the same screen, and I think it would detract from it. So I wouldn't expect it too much. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's almost a boon to this kind of a game. At the end of the day, it's a fun little challenge what will have you chuckling at the one-liners and quips as your characters die or threaten to run away, or when your main character that's named after you runs away and just leaves you a note just saying good luck and leaves you to clean up all their mess. It's grand. 
Grand is all I can say to that one. That's happened more than a few times. It's completely random if they do or not, and there's so many different dialogue options and choices. I mean, there's so much playability in this game. It's insane. Even the music's awesome. I mean, it completely detracts from the actual theme of the game, but it just makes it even more humorous. When I loaded it up, I was like, what the hell is this music going with it? And it didn't grate on me, funnily enough. It, usually the, these kind of soundtracks grate me a little bit, but it was great fun. I really enjoyed it all the way through. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm going to keep playing it. It will have you laughing all the way through. At the end of that four hour session, I did record an entire hour and I managed to get to the end. It's the first time I've got to the end. So if you want to see like a, a good reaction from the end of it, I mean, it was just such an adventure all the way through it. So much fun. And you end up getting attached to these characters. I made a few mistakes, but it wasn't too bad. Like I said, I got to the end and even just if you keep an eye out for the end boss and the end credits right at the end, that had me barely laughing like a fool. I. I didn't know how to end it, so I just ended it on, on the credits. It was that good. The game speaks for itself, and I'll just continue to play it as it's updated. You know, it's, as soon as it's out in full, I can imagine they're going to keep updating it as well. So, decent game for only a tenner. Not too bad. Anyway, I've been Bravster. This has been another Bravster's Briefs. It's been Death Road to Canada. Grab a hold of it if you enjoy the, the kind of pixel arty, I suppose, retro games. I suppose. Pixel arty. What am I on about? So my brain's a bit of a mess, probably had a zombie chewing on it. Anyway, take care. See you soon.